Hi, everybody. So today we're going to be talking about the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases. And if you are in my region's chemistry class, that means that you should have out your reference table and your acids and bases note pack. This um, lesson goes along with pages 14 and 15 in our notes. Alrighty, so let's just dive in. So the Arrhenius theory really has to do with ions, and it has to do with two specific ions. Um, that's going to be hydrogen and hydroxide. Now, in addition to hydrogen, there's another thing that you might see, and it's called hydronium, and I just want to get that out of the way now. Hydronium is what happens when this hydrogen attaches itself to a water. So instead of H2O, you end up with H3O+. Plus, okay? So if we take a hydrogen ion and we stick it on water, we will get a hydronium, okay? And then we have this hydroxide, and we're going to talk about that too. So just to look at this in a slightly different way, let's say we have hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride, all right? And hydrochloric acid um, is an Arrhenius acid, and we know that because all it is made out of is hydrogen and chlorine. That hydrogen will be the positive ion, and the chlorine will be the negative ion. Okay, when that is dissolved into water, what happens is this little hydrogen will come off, boop, and it's going to attach itself to our water. So that's what happens here when we get our hydronium ion. All a hydronium ion is is a hydrogen ion that's decided it doesn't want to be alone, and it attaches itself to a water. The other component we'll have is our chloride ion, and that just is whatever else was on the acid. So an Arrhenius acid is defined as any substance that releases hydrogen ions or hydronium ions as the only positive ions in aqueous solution. And this is our classic definition to an Arrhenius acid. So once again, they form hydrogen or hydronium ions. This is just showing you that process again, our hydrochloric acid, that hydrogen comes over and attaches itself to the water, and that's how we end up with a hydronium ion. Okay, so there's lots of different um, Arrhenius acids. Most of these are listed on table K in your reference table. And we have things like sulfuric acid, nitric acid, um, phosphoric acid, hydrochloric acid, acetic acid, that's really our most common organic acid, which is also known as vinegar, and carbonic acid, all right? Carbonic acid is what you get when you take um, carbon dioxide and run it through water. Okie dokie. So um, let's take a look at how we can identify these acids. So to identify an acid, most of the time, hydrogen will be the first element in the compound. And if you look at table K, you can see this is true. You've got hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acid. They're all there on the list, and they all start with hydrogen. However, the one exception is acetic acid or ethanoic acid. And if you look at that, there's actually two forms of that shown, one where hydrogen comes first, the other one where it doesn't. That's because it's organic, and sometimes we have to think about it in a different way, but it's still going to release a hydrogen ion. It's just not entirely obvious where that hydrogen is coming from at first glance. All right. So once again, Table K contains your Arrhenius acids, and they are in order of decreasing strength as we move down the table. So as we go down the table, we go from strong acids to weak acids acids. So the strongest acids are at the top. Once again, just showing you that formation of a hydronium ion. Um, you might have picked up. This is kind of important stuff. Here's our hydrogen ion. It was already released by an acid. Okay, in order for this hydrogen ion to be in the water, it had to have come from an acid. And it is going to attach itself to the water, give the water a plus one charge, and now it is no longer water and hydrogen they have combined to become a hydronium. 
So one thing I want to remind you of is that the process where acids separate into ions, we call that disassociation or ionization. This allows free ions to um, conduct an electric current and therefore acids are called what? What are the things that because they have mobile ions, they conduct an electric current? Yes, those things are electrolytes. Just reminding you that acids are electrolytes and they are excellent electrolytes. Now there are some different types of acids and this is in the table on your notes page. Okay, so our first example I'm going to give you is once again hydrochloric acid disassociating into one hydrogen ion and one chlorine ion. We call this monoprotic. Any acids that only produce one hydrogen ion are considered monoprotic. Any acids that release two hydrogen ions, like sulfuric acid here, are diprotic. So any acids that produce two hydrogen ions are diprotic. You can probably guess where we're going with this. Phosphoric acid releases three hydrogens, that makes it triprotic, which means it releases either one proton, two protons, or three protons, hence the name monoprotic, diprotic, and triprotic. Here's one for you to try. Here is acetic acid. Now I'm showing you the acetic acid that we have here, and then the ions that it disassociates into. According to this equation, would this acid be monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic? Yes, it would be monoprotic, absolutely, because it's only releasing one hydrogen. Alrighty, so that's it for our Arrhenius acids. The thing you need to remember about Arrhenius acids is they release hydrogen in water or hydronium in water. All a hydronium is is a water that has grabbed itself a hydrogen ion. Okay, so now let's talk about our Arrhenius bases. Bases are easier. All your Arrhenius bases release hydroxide. That's it. OH negative, that's all you got to remember. Bases form hydroxide ions. Here's an example of that happening. Here we have ammonia, which is our base, and it's combining with water. That ammonia is going to steal a hydrogen from the water and it's going to leave behind that hydroxide ion. Now ammonia works a little differently than most bases. Most bases have their own hydroxide ion and that's where the hydroxide comes from. But in the case of ammonia, it's a thief. It steals a hydrogen ion from the water and when it does, it goes from H2O to just HO or OH and that's your hydronium, or sorry, hydroxide ion. So to identify an Arrhenius base, most of the time it's a metal or a polyatomic ion attached to a hydroxide ion. Your exception is ammonia. Ammonia doesn't have its own OH, but you do find it on table L and that's an excellent place to look. Now the um, bases in table L are also found in order of decreasing strength. So they're strongest at the top and weakest at the bottom. Now all the bases in table L disassociate into ions and this enables them to form mobile ions and conduct electricity and thus they are also electrolytes. Okay, so bases and acids are both good electrolytes. That's just a reminder. So let's go through what happens, you know, in acids we had monoprotic, diprotic, triprotic. Well, we have something similar in bases. So with bases, group one metals, okay, because they can only attach to one OH group. They only release one OH group. They are called monobasic. Sometimes you might hear this referred to as monohydroxy. Here we have a group two metal. It has two hydroxides attached. That means that it would be dibasic because it releases two OHs. All right. And here our ammonia 
would also be monobasic because it results in the release of one hydroxide ion. Great. So, quick summary. Acids release positive hydrogen or positive hydronium in water, and bases release negative hydroxide. If you release more than one hydrogen, you get a different type of acid. Acids are either mono, monoprotic, which is one hydrogen, diprotic, which is two hydrogens, or triprotic, which is three hydrogens. Bases are monobasic, which is one hydroxide, or dibasic, which is two hydroxides. Now, let's do some practice questions. Example 7, which is found on page 15 of your notes. Which of these two sets of compounds would be electrolytes? So I want the pair where they are both electrolytes. Take a moment and try to answer this question. Your best answer there is C. It can't be A because that's organic. It's sugar. It can't be B because sugar is organic. This one's also organic. Here you've got an acid. Here you've got an acid. No acid here, but that one's organic. So the ones with anything organic that isn't acetic acid get thrown out because they can't be electrolytes. Here we've got an acid and a base, and thus that is our electrolyte pair. Let's look at our next question. Which compound releases hydroxide ions in aqueous solution? Hydroxide. Give this one a try. Well, you can probably see that three of our choices all have an OH group, but only one of them is right. Which one would it be? Well, there are no organic bases that we're talking about, so our classic Arrhenius base would be choice D. Let's look at example nine. When an Arrhenius acid dissolves in water, what is the only positive ion in solution? Well, if we're talking about a classic Arrhenius acid, A has to be our only choice. They all release hydrogen or hydronium ions. 10. The hydrogen ion, H plus 1, ooh, should have fixed that. Oh, that's so annoying in aqueous solution may also be written as a hydronium ion. Write the formula for a hydronium ion and describe how it forms. All right, so I'm not going to ask you to do that here, but in your free response, just give me a rough idea of how a hydronium ion forms from a, an acid put into water. All right, so I was looking for you to tell me something like this. When the acid releases the hydrogen ion, that hydrogen ion attaches to a water and forms a hydronium ion. I'll take a look at your answers um, after you turn them in. We'll see how you did. Let's look at example 11. Which one of these would be the best conductor of electricity? Well, if we're looking for a good conductor of electricity, we're looking for something with mobile ions. Now, quite frankly, we've got we've got hydrochloric acid here as our best answer. And you might wonder, well, we've got a base here too. How come the base isn't the answer? Well, it has to do with the strength of the acids versus the strength of the base. If you look at table K and you look at table L, um, remember acids start strong at the top and end weaker at the bottom. Same thing is true for bases. Hydrochloric acid is a stronger acid than ammonia is a base, and that's because it disassociates better, and that's why it is our best answer. And that's going to wrap us up for Arrhenius acids and bases today. Um, Thanks a bunch, guys.